5280 Sports Network on a Friday. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you. I hope you are wearing green and are planning to be a hooligan later. That's Sean Drotar. I'm Nate Lundy. Thanks for stopping by your morning minute here. Uh, a couple of notes to be able to hit on. Uh, first and foremost on a lot of people's minds, the Broncos met with uh, Joe Mixon yesterday. Uh, Joe Mixon is represented by Peter Schaefer, the uh, super agent who happens to be based here in Denver. And uh, he was actually on with Eric and Les on Mile High Sports yesterday afternoon. If you missed that interview, it's posted up at milehighsports.com. But this is a very polarizing topic for people. Um, it gets brought up with players every year. There's always ones with backgrounds. This one uh, happens to be violence against a woman. So I understand why um, there's a lot of hand-wringing, a lot of opinions about this. Sean, you've seen it in social media and what everybody is saying. Where do you fall on some of this? Well, I, I guess I take a look at it and I don't know the person. I don't know what they've learned. I think you do your due diligence. Pers my personal opinion is if I'm the Broncos, I stay away, but I understand why you talk about it and I understand why you take a look. But I, I think that the NFL needs to be a little more cognizant and teams need to be a little more cognizant of the fact that, that not every player who's talented needs to be part of the equation and I think uh, what I find very peculiar is that there are GMs that are talking about maybe looking at Joe, Joe Mixon that will rule out Colin Kaepernick because they don't want the uh, the headache I guess of, of PR there after his stance last year which you know last I checked was neither illegal nor violent. Right, exactly. The thing I'll say about Joe Mixon is this, a couple of points I'll bring up. I mentioned the fact that his agent is Peter Schaefer here locally. Peter's a very well-established agent, and Peter chose to meet, with, to meet with him, and then ultimately to represent him after meeting with him. Peter is not somebody who's an up-and-coming agent who's worried about trying to get as many clients as he can. This is one where Peter Schaefer can pick and choose who he wants to represent and who he wants to work with. I don't know Joe Mixon, just like Sean said. I don't know him, but I know that Peter Schaefer has taken the time to get to know him and chose to represent him. I take that as a positive. I also take into account the fact that that's why these teams are meeting with him. And if ultimately the Broncos come out of the meeting and say, mm, boy, he makes us a little bit nervous, then so be it. If they come out of the meeting with him, having spent time with him, and recognize that there has been some sort of an advancement made for him personally, not professionally, personally in who he is as a person, I can't judge that because I'm not in the room. So ultimately at the end of the day, if teams have had the conversation with him and believe that he is humble, that he recognizes what was done that was unacceptable, if he owns up to it and does not hide from it, and in fact, if that is a badge he has to carry around, if he embraces it as an opportunity to make it something good going forward for himself as well as other people, I can't judge that because I don't know him, but ultimately I have to trust the people who are talking to him who want to make him a professional in the National Football League. And if ultimately somebody does that, and they will, then you have to believe that at some point he has made an impact on them that shows that what happened to him that we all saw on the video has in fact been put in the past. He has grown from it and is going to use it not only to better himself, but to hopefully better other people. That's what I have to hope for. I'm a second chance type of guy. I have to hope that that is in fact where he is going with his life. And if it's the Broncos or any other team of the 32 in the National Football League that give him that chance, that's what all of us can hope for, is that what has happened in the past cannot and will not repeat itself and even to the point where he wants to use his platform to make sure that others don't do it that's what I hope for will I be proven wrong I don't know but I hope so yeah and, and a guy like Mixon in his case I understand that everyone looks at it and say oh, we can join into the league and who knows how many chances you get well you should get one mm -hmm. for first time you mess up first time you, you you diverge from the lane you're supposed to be in it's probably time to find another line of work the question is would a team in the NFL actually be willing to do that because uh, as we know whether it's right or wrong talent tends to play yeah it does and here's the other thing I'll tell you 250 some odd kids kids are going to get drafted at the end of April into the National Football League Joe Mixon had a problem that was caught on tape how many things do you think belong to those other players that weren't caught on tape recognize that sometimes you don't want to know how the sausage is made and I understand that. I believe that Joe Mixon deserves another chance. What he does with that is entirely up to him. I'll leave it at that. We hope you have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy St. Patrick's Day. Do it smartly, please. Do not drive. Get out and have a good time. We know how Denver loves itself some St. Patrick's Day. So have a good weekend. We'll see you Monday. For Sean, I'm Nate. We're out.